just because a player doesn't get drafted doesn't mean that they're bad. In fact, some of the best players today in the NFL are the guys who got completely overlooked by the football world. And he's able to escape, keeps the play alive, runs for the first down, dies for the pylon as he is. Every football fan loves a good underdog story. And what's a better underdog story than a player who went undrafted only to exceed all expectations and prove the naysayers wrong by piecing together a solid all-around career? Some of today's top NFL stars and notable players didn't get to experience the dream of hearing their names called at the draft table, but they inspired us by showing us it's not how you start, but how you finish. So with all that being said, here are the 10 best undrafted players in the NFL right now. Justin Tucker Kickers aren't the most exciting players in football, but Tucker is only the greatest kicker in NFL history, so of course he's going to be mentioned first on this list. It feels like a lifetime ago, but the Baltimore Ravens once had another one of the game's best kickers in Billy Cundiff. But after his brutal miss in the waning seconds of the 2011 AFC Championship game, the organization decided to create some competition. A month after the 2012 draft, the Ravens signed Texans product Justin Tucker to compete with Cundiff. The rookie won the battle and became Baltimore's kicker in 2012. Tucker had a phenomenal rookie season and showed up in crunch time, booting the game-winning field goal in overtime of the Ravens' AFC Divisional Round showdown against the top-seeded Denver Broncos. Tucker's golden leg was also vital in helping the Ravens win Super Bowl 47 over the San Francisco 49ers. Tucker's numbers just kept getting better and better from there. He has the best career field goal percentage, the record for longest field goal ever at 66 yards, and it was a game-winner, by the way, and in 2010's All-Decade team selection on his resume. Well, Tucker has been quite literally Mr. Automatic with the game on the line. Adam Vinatieri may have more Super Bowls, but he was never as consistent as Tucker. This guy still has plenty of productive years left in him, but he is already unquestionably the GOAT of NFL kickers. Adam Thielen Thielen is one of the best feel-good underdog stories of his era. He played college football for the lesser-known Minnesota State Mavericks football program. Despite his strong final season there, Thielen went undrafted in 2013 and later reached a contract agreement with his hometown Minnesota Vikings. But he was waived before the start of the 2013 campaign, and though Minnesota later brought him back on the practice squad, Thielen didn't play a single snap that year. Thielen did just enough to remain on the Vikings roster in 2014 and 2015, though he got limited playing time. In 2016, however, it all finally came together for the Detroit Lakes native. Thielen broke out with 69 receptions for 967 yards and 5 touchdowns in the 2016 campaign. He followed it up with consecutive 1,000-yard seasons in 2017 and 2018, helping Minnesota reach the NFC Championship game in the former year. When healthy, he's a consistent threat for 1,000 yards a season. And when all is said and done, Thielen should retire among the top three in all of the franchise's meaningful receiving categories. Honestly, not bad for a kid who went to a small collegiate program, then went undrafted and got waived as a rookie. Austin Eckler Despite being a 1,000-yard back at Western Colorado, Eckler's name went uncalled during the 2017 draft. But the Los Angeles Chargers saw something in Eckler. They signed him as an undrafted free agent following the draft, and, well, the rest is history. The 2017 NFL Draft class turned out to be one of the best ever for running backs. Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Joe Mixon, Kareem Hunt, Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, and Aaron Jones are just some of the names to emerge from that impressive class. And Eckler has put his name right up there with all those big-name players who were drafted. In fact, in fact, you'd have to think that Eckler would be a first round pick if we redo the 2017 draft today. After putting up 539 yards of offense as a rookie, Eckler broke out as a sophomore with 958 yards of offense and 6 total touchdowns. He helped the Chargers to 12 wins and the franchise's first playoff berth in 5 years. The do-it-all running back surpassed 1,500 yards of offense and hit double-digit touchdowns in 2019 and 2021. In the latter year, Eckler and Jonathan Taylor of the Indianapolis Colts led the league with 20 total touchdowns. Most teams prefer to have a consistent 1,000-yard rusher leading their backfield, but no ho, not the Chargers. That that's because they have Eckler putting up a ridiculous amount of receiving yards to make up for the lower rushing totals. Yeah, the Chargers did pretty well by finding this gem who was passed over by 32 teams at the 2017 draft. Robbie Anderson Anderson turned heads during his two-year tenure at Temple by averaging 15.2 yards per catch. The speedy deep threat posted 16 receiving touchdowns and even did some special teams return work. Despite the high skill set, Anderson was passed over at the 2016 NFL Draft. The New York Jets spotted something, however, and signed him to a contract after the draft. 
And boy, did it turn out to be quite the bargain, all right. In his sophomore 2017 campaign, Anderson racked up 63 receptions for 941 yards and seven touchdowns. Despite awful quarterback play, he managed to hit the 50 catch and 700 yard marks in 2018 and 2019. Anderson joined the Carolina Panthers in 2020 and tuned in a career year. 95 catches for 1,096 yards and three touchdowns. His production has declined ever since, largely thanks to more awful quarterback play, but you know what, the dude has still done very well for an undrafted product. Kenny Moore the second. Bill Belichick always seems to find great defensive backs who went undrafted, but Moore didn't break out until after he left Foxborough. The New England Patriots signed Moore after the 2017 draft, but he failed to make the final roster. The Colts picked Moore up off of waivers, and he wound up appearing in all 16 games that year as a depth piece. But Moore has since grown into one of the game's most underrated corners, even earning a Pro Bowl nod in the 2021 season. He posted double-digit pass defenses in 2018, 2020, and 2021 leading Indy to the playoffs in the first two years. Moore isn't exactly elite in man coverage, but he plays in a zone-heavy defense, and he's flourished as one of the game's best ball hawkers in Indy. It's a good thing for the Colts that Belichick gave up on Moore so quickly, as they were able to swoop in and reap the benefits. David Andrews The aforementioned Bill Belichick does a lot of things right, but he's especially good at finding great cornerbacks, running backs, and offensive linemen just out of nowhere. Case in point, veteran mainstay and center David Andrews, who joined the Patriots as an undrafted rookie out of Georgia in 2015. Andrews has been the heart and soul of New England's O-line since his rookie year. This team is known for replacing veteran stalwarts with younger and cheaper alternatives when the time is right, but there's a reason Belichick has remained loyal to Andrews for nearly a decade now. Andrews was pivotal in helping the Patriots win Super Bowls 51 and 53. The tackles and guards around him always change, but there is one constant on the New England's O-line, and that is David. Andrews. JC Jackson. Hey look, yet another undrafted product who became a star with the Patriots. New England had a void at cornerback after moving on from fan favorite Malcolm Butler, who signed with the Tennessee Titans in 2018 free agency. The little known JC Jackson, a standout corner out of Maryland, joined the Patriots after going undrafted that year. Jackson saw limited playing time in his rookie year, but he still managed three interceptions and six pass defenses. He became the Patriots' number two corner in 2019 behind eventual defensive player of the year Stephon Gilmore. Then, from 2019 to 2021, Jackson was arguably the NFL's best cornerback. He had 47 pass defenses, including a whopping 23 in the 2021 campaign, along with 22 interceptions. Jackson wound up signing a lucrative deal with the Los Angeles Chargers in 2022 free agency. Yes, his first year in LA was a bit of a disappointment, even before he suffered a season-ending knee injury, but there is plenty of time to turn it around. And even if he doesn't, Jackson's incredible four-year run in New England is enough for him to land on this list. James Robinson The Jaguars already had a 1,000-yard rusher and Leonard Fournette on the roster, so it wasn't exactly newsworthy when they signed Illinois State running back James Robinson as an undrafted free agent in 2020. But Robinson turned heads with a strong showing in training camp and made the final roster. The Jaguars released Fournette ahead of the 2020 season, paving the way for Robinson to step in as the new workhorse running back in Duval County. Even on the NFL's worst team, Robinson racked up 1,070 rushing yards, 1,414 yards of offense, and 10 total touchdowns as a rookie. Though he missed three games in 2021, Robinson tallied 989 total yards and eight touchdowns. If he was healthy, he likely would have hit the 1,000-yard rushing mark. He lost his starting job to Travis Etienne in 2022 and was subsequently dealt to the Jets ahead of the trade deadline. His tenure in Jacksonville was short, but Robinson has made quite the name for himself, especially when you consider that he was an undrafted running back on the NFL's worst team. Taylor Heineke Heineke was a star for the old Dominion Monarchs football team. That program obviously isn't viewed as a powerhouse, however, so Heineke was vastly overlooked at the 2015 draft. Heineke went unsigned, unsurprisingly, and wound up signing with the Minnesota Vikings, who already had a starting QB in Teddy Bridgewater. He didn't attempt a single pass during his tenure in Minnesota, though, before briefly landing on the Patriots and Houston Texans rosters in 2017. Both clubs wound up releasing him, however. Heineke saw brief playing time for the Carolina Panthers in 2018, even making one start. From there, he joined the St. Louis Battlehawks of the XFL in 2020, but the season was shut down early because of COVID-19. 
Finally, the Washington Commanders signed Heineke late in the 2020 season to serve as a backup to Alex Smith. A calf injury forced Smith to miss Washington's wildcard game against Tom Brady's Buccaneers, forcing Heineke to start on short notice. Heineke had a remarkable performance against the eventual Super Bowl champions, thrown for 306 yards to go along with one passing and one rushing touchdown. The heavy underdogs lost 31-23, but Heineke's epic outing would not be forgotten. Ryan Fitzpatrick was supposed to be Washington's starter in 2021, but a hip injury forced him to miss most of the year. So, Washington went with Heineke for 15 of the final 16 games. And he tallied a respectable 7-8 record with 20 touchdowns against 15 picks. That, of course, included a victory against Brady and the Bucks in Week 10 to get some sweet comeuppance. Heineke had to replace an injured Carson Wentz in the midst of the 2022 season, and the former once again provided stable play at the game's most important position. Heineke probably won't be a long-term starter, but high-end backup? You bet. He's got a long-term job in this league, which isn't half bad, considering he was an undrafted journeyman before finally landing in D.C. Shaquille Barrett the star-studded Denver Broncos defense added a little-known Shaquille Barrett after the 2014 NFL Draft. Barrett starred at Colorado State, winning 2013 Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year honors, so it was somewhat surprising that he went undrafted. Barrett didn't play a single snap as a rookie in 2014. He saw a limited role in 2015 and recorded four forced fumbles and 5.5 sacks. Barrett and the powerful Broncos defense led the organization to a Super Bowl 50 championship, the third in franchise history. But the Broncos never gave Barrett the chance to be a regular starter, so he sought a change of scenery and landed with the Buccaneers in 2019 free agency. All he did in year one with his new team was lead the NFL in sacks with 19.5 to go along with six forced fumbles. Barrett returned to the Bucks in 2020 and posted eight sacks in the regular season. He and the vaunted Tampa defense bullied their way past opponents in the postseason and route to a Super Bowl 55 championship, giving Barrett his second ring. Barrett posted 10 sacks for the Bucks in 2021 once again cementing himself as one of the game's premier pass rushers. So, yeah, we'd say he's carved out a pretty spectacular career for a guy who entered the NFL with practically no expectations. But who do you think is the best undrafted player in the NFL right now? Join us in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.